bit of code, right, summing this i squared, how many operations happen when I call it with some parameter n? There's a bunch of options for you there. There's no I don't know this time. But let's see if you can take a guess. So think about it for a minute, maybe two. Discuss with your neighbor if you want, and tell me how many operations happen when we call foo with parameter n. Okay, answer B and C are both quite popular, 45 and 33% each. I don't know, turned out to be an option in Feedback Foods after all, which 15% of you found, good. So, my answer to this question is actually pretty close to I don't know. Because my answer to this question is of course the computer science answer. It depends. I reckon I can defend at least answers B and C, maybe also answer D. Answer A is a little bit more difficult to defend, but I could give it a go. So let's take a look. This thing, yeah, okay, I need to make a variable and put zero in it. Huh, make a variable and put zero in it. Okay, so I could already argue that that's two operations that I need to do. Okay, in the end I also need to return it. So that's one more, so that's three. Okay, well, this one is going to be hard to defend after all then, but this one has a free in it. Okay, that's good. Um, then, well, there's this thing, and that will happen n times. But, but hang on, what is this thing? It is a multiplication and an addition. So it's two things that happen n times. Okay, so 3 plus 2n. Okay, but this is 4 plus 2n, so hmm, maybe I missed one. Oh, but then there's also this thing for i in range n, okay, so what does that do? Well, it creates the variable i, that's one thing that it needs to do, and then for n time steps, it needs to increment this thing, so that's another n steps, okay, uh, oh, but hang on, it actually only needs to increment it n minus, okay, n minus one times, because for the last step, when it has reached the value n minus 1, we don't actually want to increment it anymore, because we're done. Hmm. Yeah, so it's probably something like this. Although this is pretty close, I mean, we're just missing one n. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I, I guess if forced to pick between them, I would go for c. But I don't like that. I don't like being forced to pick for any of these, because I don't care whether the s equals 0 whether that's one thing or two things, who cares? It's a bit of work. All that matters is that this thing, s equals zero, happens only once. Whereas this thing, s plus equals i times i, that thing happens n times. It happens a lot. So what we try to do is not to care whether it's 2 plus n or even 3 plus 2n. All we care about is which part of the codes scale with the input and which parts of the code don't. And more importantly, how they scale. So if we take a look, sure it has a fancy name, asymptotic runtime complexity. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But if we take a look at this, at this piece of code, then this thing, s equals zero, and also return s, they take the same amount of time, whether n, whether the, whether n equals zero, or whether n equals a thousand, or whether n equals a million, it doesn't matter. They take some constant amount of time. This bit, this bit takes more time when n grows larger. When n equals 100, this takes more time when n e than when n equals 10. And it scales linearly. When n becomes twice as large, this will become twice as much work. And so this is what I care about. It is some constant amount of work, namely creating the variable and returning it, 
plus some linear amount of work. Some constant, might be two operations every time, or three or four, I don't care, some constant, times n for the for loop. But so far, it's still been a little bit vague, so let's try to formalize things a little bit. Let's see if we can somehow get a bit more exact. And to do so, we will use what we call big O notation. Who's heard of big O notation before? Ah, okay, so my friend was wrong. Because my friend told me that you might have seen this notation before. Um, so we call this, in this case, asymptotic runtime complexity. And we can say something like, well, this function, 3n plus 2, is on. Notice how I use just the English is here, rather than the equal sign. So, big O, what does it mean? Well, formally it means this. And now we get to see whether you indeed are less frightened by this stuff than my computer science students are. So it means that there's two constants, c and n0, such that for all n larger than n0, it holds that my function fn is smaller than or equal to this constant c times gn. Basically, that my function is upper bound by some other function after a certain point. Imagine this is my linear function gn with some constant in front of it, right? The slope of this thing. And I have a function that does a bit like this, but afterwards, after a certain point, it remains under this line gn. Then this function fn is o g of n. It's upper bound by the function gn. 